Hello viewers! Does your car have an engine with a turbocharger? If so, you want to know all about these power boosting devices, what they do, how they fail and most importantly, what you can do to prevent this from happening. And of course, how much could it cost to replace a bad turbo should this be needed? So let's see what's what. A bad turbocharger, depending on what's wrong with it, can cause all sorts of issues, ranging from blue smoke from the exhaust upon startup, accompanied by increased oil consumption, to sudden and noticeable drops in engine power output or weird noises coming from under the hood. But let me explain each of these in detail. The main purpose of the turbocharger is to improve the engine's power output. So when it starts failing, you're quite likely to see a drop in acceleration and overall performance. This might be a slight loss at first, but it can also be massive and really noticeable if the turbo fails completely. Common reasons why this happens range from the failure of the turbocharger's internal components that prevent it from generating sufficient boost, intake leaks through which the pressurized air is escaping, to various electrical or sensor-related issues that may prevent the turbo from activating. Another thing you might notice is a puff of bluish or grey smoke from the exhaust, usually right after starting the car. The reason for this can be a leaking turbocharger, which uses engine oil to lubricate its moving parts. If the seals inside the turbo's housing fall apart, the oil will drip into it and get burned inside the engine or the exhaust. Obviously, a lot of things besides a bad turbocharger can cause blue smoke from the exhaust. For instance, this can happen because of the valve seals have fallen apart, or the PCV system is not working as it should. So before blaming the turbo, the whole engine should be thoroughly inspected. Now, if you have a blue or grey smoke from the exhaust, be it because of a bad turbo or something else, you'll also have a higher oil consumption because the engine is burning it. Depending on the scope of the problem, this amount of oil the car loses over, say, 1000 miles can be quite severe, so you need to check its level regularly. This is especially true if the engine has no sensors to measure the oil quantity, so you might not be aware it's dangerously low until it's too late. The next on the list would be some weird, unusual noises you might hear while the engine is running, especially during accelerations. Now, the turbocharger does make a characteristic whistling or whooshing sounds as it spools up when you press the throttle, and that's perfectly fine. But if this changes in frequency or pitch, it might, and usually does, mean something's wrong. For instance, a cracked hose that connects to the turbo will create a noticeable hissing sound, or if the wastegate that controls the turbocharger's pressure starts acting up, you might hear an erratic flutter, often accompanied by sporadic power loss. However, the most dangerous is if you can hear some growling or grinding noises on accelerations, as this could mean the turbocharger's internal moving parts have too much play and are hitting against the housing. This can quickly result in bits of metal falling off and flying into the engine, which then causes significant and expensive damage to it. If the turbo isn't working properly, it might not provide sufficient amounts of pressurized air, and the engine won't have an ideal air-fuel mixture. As a result, the gas it uses won't be burned most efficiently, which will inevitably hurt the fuel economy. To be more precise, you'll have a rich mixture, with the unburned gas escaping through the exhaust. Even more, the car might be down on power, so you might be pressing the throttle a bit more to get it going, which additionally worsens the gas mileage. Next, we have the check engine light, which might pop up on the dashboard if the turbocharger isn't performing as it should. The thing is, the car's ECU is constantly monitoring all vital running parameters, so it's likely to spot if the intake pressure or the air-fuel mixture is off. If the problem is severe enough, this will trigger a check engine light and store a corresponding trouble code. Still, this can happen for a number of reasons, so to be sure, you need to check the codes with the scanner. Apart from turbocharger-related stuff, you might also see something about the MAF sensor or rich fuel mixture. But before blaming it on the sensors, 
I'd suggest checking the turbocharger as well as the intercooler and connecting hoses. If there is a crack somewhere here, this will cause pressure leaks that ECU usually interprets as incorrect MAF or oxygen probe readings. Lastly, if you have a boost gauge in your car, you might notice the turbo pressure isn't correct. Either it's not building up as fast as it should when you press the throttle, or it may go up and down while coasting at a steady speed. So if that's the case, it's almost certain there is some sort of a turbo related issue. So these were the most common symptoms of a failing turbocharger, and now let's see how this thing works and what it does. The turbocharger is a mechanical device that compresses air going into the engine, which increases its output. By forcing more air into the same space, more fuel can be added, which ultimately results in more power and torque. The mechanics behind this process are simple. Turbocharger has two main parts. The turbine at one end and the compressor at the other, with the shaft connecting the two. So, while the engine is running, the exhaust gases spin the turbine, which then powers the compressor and compresses the air coming from the filter housing through connecting hoses. Once the compressed air leaves the turbocharger, it usually goes through an intercooler, where it gets cooled down. Besides these mechanical parts, the turbocharger also has a vacuum or electronically controlled wastegate, which controls the pressure it generates depending on the driving conditions. Because the turbocharger is powered by exhaust gases, this determines its location. In most cases, you'll find it bolted directly on the exhaust manifold, as it can be seen here. This is the turbocharger and its turbine end, with the exhaust downpipe connected to it, while this side, where these plastic hoses are attached, is the compressor side, where the incoming air is compressed before being sent to the engine. In some cars, however, the turbo is hidden by other surrounding components, or tucked away deep inside the engine bay. For instance, in this BMW, you can hardly see it when the hood is up, let alone reach it or do anything around it. And this is something to have in mind when talking about repair expenses, which is the next question we're going to answer. Now I can tell you straight away that replacing a bad turbocharger is a quite an expensive job. The parts alone are more than thousand dollars, and for some cars, that can be a couple of thousand dollars. Sure, you can significantly cut down the cost by rebuilding your old turbocharger, which is done by specialized workshops. Then, if you're paying a mechanic, which you probably will, have in mind that ease of access, or the lack of it to be more precise, can have a huge impact on the overall labor costs. In most cases, the job can be done within two or three hours, but in some cars, it could take the whole day until the turbocharger is replaced. In general, a stock turbocharger should last the lifetime of the vehicle. With good maintenance, using the correct oil, not flooring the car until it warms up, you should be able to get more than 200,000 miles out of the turbocharger without any trouble. One more question I'd like to answer here is whether you can drive with a bad turbocharger. Although possible, the engine will run even when the turbo is out of action, this is not very wise. For one, the car will be seriously down on power, meaning you'll have to really put your foot down to get any performance out of it. And that puts additional stress on the engine, which isn't working under ideal conditions at the moment. If it's only leaking oil, that might not be that dramatic, but it can still cause different issues, like fouled spark plugs or a damaged catalytic converter. Not to mention, the bad turbocharger can fall apart, with resulting metal fragments damaging the pistons and cylinders, meaning, in addition to buying a new turbo, you'll have to rebuild or replace the engine as well. And lastly, let me show you a couple of things you can check yourself using just some basic tools. First, try to move this rod. If it feels rock solid, there is a chance the waste gate is stuck, which prevents this valve from opening it, resulting in a potential overboost situation. Then, remove this hose that goes from the air filter box to the turbo and take a look inside. What you can see is a compressor impeller. Try to wiggle it with your fingers. 
If there is a lot of play, the shaft and its bearings might be damaged, meaning the turbo will have to be replaced or rebuilt. So that would be all about the turbocharger. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. On the other hand, if you're having some different engine issues, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!